to the Lord right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we worship and praise you tonight, Lord. God, you're worthy of our praise and our adoration tonight, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your power, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for the power of God? You know, usually I think when we talk about the power of God, we immediately think of miracles and healings and things that blow our mind. And but really the power of God is at work in our lives right now. Just the fact that you and I are here tonight is evidence that the power of God is at work in our lives. That you and I is that such were some of you. Some of us were drunkards. Some of us were lost. Some of us were bound. But here we are tonight, standing free in the presence of God with a hunger and a thirst for the things of God that we maybe didn't used to have. You know what? That's the power of God at work in the lives of people. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know about you, but the power of God on our lives continues to amaze me when I see what we used to be and what God is doing in our life now. How God can take the heart of someone who hates God or who maybe denies the existence of God and then can turn that person into one of the most passionate people for God on the planet. It just amazes me. This is the power of God, that he is able to touch the hardest of hearts, that he's able to reach into the bleakest of situations and God is able to transform and change what we cannot on our own. 
God is in the process of working on us, changing us. And it's the power of God at work in us. God bless you guys. You can be seated. Good to be in the house of the Lord here tonight. Thankful for what we feel here. I know my parents are out of town. They are, uh, they've been in Wisconsin and Michigan with Amber and Joe. And uh, they are having a quite a time. I think they're enjoying themselves, enjoying their vacation, enjoying their time off. And uh, me and Kara have been going over to their house and taking care of their peas and tomatoes and uh, jalapeno peppers and picking peas and shelling peas. And I think, man, they should just get a dog and it'd be easier. We'll come let it out and, you know, then go back home. I'm in their kitchen shelling peas for them. No, we've been enjoying doing it. Even Daniel's been shelling peas and we've, we've had fun, but I know they'll be glad to get back home, but, uh, but we do miss them. Aren't you thankful for our pastor? And thankful for the leadership here that we have with uh, Marcus and Farah Baptiste and Jimmy and Holly and Bianca and just the whole leadership team. Uh, God has blessed us here at the Pentecostals of Deland. I hope you don't take it for granted. Uh, not everywhere has such a qualified and wonderful group of people like we have here in Deland. Praise God. Hey, uh, my voice is doing its best to get away from me, and I apologize. This has been happening since yesterday, so if uh, we'll see how long it holds out. If you see me closing rather early, you'll think, okay, this must be the end, you know. But I'm looking at Genesis chapter 26, verse 3 through 4. Genesis chapter 26, verse 3 through 4. And it says, sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed." This is really an extension of the promise and the covenant that was made to Isaac's father, Abraham. That God had made a covenant with Abraham that said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with you. And I'm going to make your, your uh, descendants as many as the sands on the seashore. And all nations of the earth are going to be blessed through you, Abraham. There was a special covenant between God and Abraham. And then this passage of scripture is uh, concerning Isaac, which was Abraham's son, that this was going to be a continuation. God offers Isaac the same covenant that he offered Abraham. And I want to talk to you guys for a few minutes here tonight on just digging wells, digging wells. If we can, one more time, let's pray that God would help us here tonight, that God would speak to us. Lord, we love you. God, I thank you, Lord, for your hand upon us. Thank you, Lord, that you are at work in our midst. I thank you, Lord, for what we feel here tonight, and that, God, we have the privilege to come in and feel and experience the power of God like we do here tonight. And, Lord, and to hear the word of God, which is powerful and quick and makes such a difference and such a change, Lord, in the lives of men and women. God, I pray that our hearts would be open to the word of God tonight, that, Lord, you would speak to us and that, God, you would have your way in us in the remainder of this service. And, God, we thank you for it. And, God, we believe you for it tonight in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. You can be seated. You know, this was a critical point in the plan of God and the the truth and relationship with God that had been established in the past generation with Abraham. And, uh, and as well as the generations of the future would be a part of God's plan. And it would be really affected how this thing would move forward by how Isaac responded to God. God is basically offering an invitation, you know, offering the same extension of the promise. And we see Isaac... In verse 26, chapter 26, verse 12, it says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and a possession of herds and a great store of servants and the Philistines 
envied him. The Bible says the Philistines envied him and they were not going to make life easy for Isaac. The Philistines had always been an enemy to God's people. And many times you'll hear preaching and you'll hear teaching and you'll hear uh, read commentaries that will liken the Philistines to the flesh or to the devil. It's something that always stands in opposition to God's people. You know, the Philistines were a wandering people who worshiped strange gods. They did not want Isaac in their land, especially when they saw him and his possessions multiplying. So the Bible says they literally stopped up the wells of Abraham, Isaac's father, because they wanted to keep Isaac from growing and expanding in this territory. So the, the wells that Abraham had dug years ago, they began stopping up the wells and piling earth into the wells. You know, your flesh and the devil are not going to make things easy for you. The plan is not to stand by and watch you dig wells and prosper, but there is opposition that comes against you and I. Anybody feel like there's opposition and when you're trying to live for God in this day and hour, you're just trying to do what's right. You're trying to please God. You're trying to live right, trying to talk right. And, and it just feels like you're the salmon swimming upstream that everybody's going one direction and you're the lone wolf going the opposite way. And sometimes it feels like you're the only one trying to do what's right. And there's just, and you're just piled with opposition day after day. You know, for Isaac, He's in this land that God has promised him and he's right where God wants him to be and God is blessing him. And at the same time that God is blessing him and multiplying his, his provisions, his possessions, uh, that the Philistines are standing in opposition to him. And they're like, we don't want you here. And they actually begin stopping up the wells. If, you know, it's not like you just move into Deland and you call city of Deland and say, hey, come hook up my water. I'm ready. You know, for us, Water is easy to come by. We dump out water bottles. We'll drink one sip, throw it in the trash. We don't care. You know, it's so readily available to us. Here, water meant everything. If you didn't have water, you were not surviving. You were not living. And God is expanding his herds and expanding his household and blessing him. And you know what you need to sustain all that? You need water to sustain all of that growth. Verse 15 says, For the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And God had given Isaac a promise to stay in this land and God would bless him. If Isaac was going to stay here, he's going to need water. Water was life. Water was everything. And the very thing that he needs, the opposition is trying to keep him from attaining and trying to keep him from getting. You know, water is also likened in the Bible to the Holy Spirit. When you look at John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39, it says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. He was talking about the Holy Ghost that people would receive not many days hence, and it would be like rivers of living water flowing out of your belly. We're talking about life-giving water. That's why people come to God, and they're so broken and so depleted of energy, and everything is wrong. And when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, there is a, a, a new New life that begins to take place and you are tapping into this source of living water like you've never tasted before and you can see people in the darkest of places and you see a complete transformation because now all of a sudden they have tapped into a life giving source that they did not have access to before you know water was crucial to survival and growth for Isaac and his family and his herds so what does Isaac do? He can't call city to land. He, he goes and he digs the wells of his father, Abraham. Verse 18, it says, And Isaac digged again the wells of water, 
which they had digged in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. You know, Isaac began to tap into the efforts of the previous generation. What the previous generation had done, Isaac just started to kind of do the same thing and started redigging the wells that his father had done. You know, for us individually and as a church, you know, we do have to get to a point and we can begin to tap into the wells that other people have dug and we can look at pastor and we can see what he's done and he's kind of paved the way and he's, he's dug some wells and tapped into some life giving water. But there does come a point where we have to learn to dig our own wells. Where we can't just survive off of the wells that other people have dug. You know, we can't depend on wells dug by others. This is why you can come to church and feel refreshed and you feel the power of God and you feel liberty and you just, you taste that life giving water and then you go home and you're dry as dust the rest of the week. Anybody ever felt that before? It's because we're coming and we're tapping into some wells that other people have dug and we get some refreshment and we get to taste the water and we get to feel the liberty and we get to feel the power of the Holy Ghost. And then we go back home and we don't feel the power and we don't feel the liberty and, and we don't feel it until we come back to the source of the well again. You can come in and feel the power of God in a service because someone has been digging some wells in their life. Someone has been tapping into what is available to them. And I will say there is some stuff that is available to us as Christians of the Most High God, children of the Most High God. There are some resources. There are things that are available to us that we actually just have to tap into, but it is there. When you look at programs that are available to us as Americans, we have what we call a safety net. And thank God for it. Many people rely on this. Many people depend on it. I've got people in my family that have depended on this at times. That when hard times come, when, when everything goes sideways on you, there are programs that are available to you as an American, as a citizen of this country. That if you need help with food, there's help with food. If you need help with housing, there's help with housing. If you even need help getting a phone, there's help getting a phone in your home. There's literally all kinds of programs and resources. I looked it up and there's a page long of, of programs available to you and I as Americans. Half of them I never even heard before. But it's available to you as an American when you need it. It's there. But what they don't do is they don't come knock on your door the day you lose your job. And there's a government worker with a clipboard saying, hey, I heard you lost your job and you need some money to get you by. How many have ever had that happen? <laughs> it's usually the opposite. You make like 100 phone calls, <laughs> call this person, call that department, talk to them, fill out that paperwork, bring down this birth certificate, bring down this. But those programs are available, but there has to be a little bit of work on part of the citizen to get hold of those resources. You know, God has so many resources available to you and I. You know, the Bible says that you shall be endued with power from on high when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. That, you know what, there is so much power and so much resources available to us as Christians that, you know what, sometimes we just don't tap into all that God has for us. God has healing and deliverance and breakthroughs and victories and anointing that is available to us it's not out of reach it's not beyond you it's not for somebody else it is for you it is for me but you know what we do have to tap in to what is available to us you know we need to, to learn to dig our own wells and stop relying on the efforts of others because then I have access to water, not just on Sunday, but any day of the week, any time I need it, I've got my own well that I can go to. I've got my own place where I can be refreshed in the Holy Ghost. I've got my own place I can go to, to get what I need. I don't have to depend on the wells that were dug by other people. You know, Isaac was going to have to establish other wells through his own efforts. Verse 19, it says, Isaac's servants digged in the valley 
and found there a well of springing water. It literally means a well of living water. This was a new well that Isaac dug that his father did not dig. That was literally called a well of living water. You know, Isaac put in the work. There were obstacles coming against him. The Philistines were filling in his father's wells with rocks, with dirt. And for Isaac, it wasn't an easy task to unearth those wells and dig them out. You know, now that he had pushed through some opposition and he did to get to the father, to the wells that his father had dug. He then had to overcome more opposition that would try and prevent him from digging new wells that would provide for the growth that God had promised him, that God was wanting to give him, that he had to tap into new wells, wells that his father didn't dig. He had to go find more sources of water and dig his own wells, not just uncover the old wells that would sustain the growth that God wanted to give him. You know, you will have to push through opposition when you first come to God. You know, when you start making moves towards God, the enemy hates to see you move and work towards God. You know, Revelation 12, 12 actually talks about how Satan is working with a sense of urgency because he sees the day and the hour in which we live. And he is bent on destroying as much of mankind and as much of what God has established as possible in the short amount of time that he has left. And you are going to have to face opposition when you say, you know what, I'm tired of living the way I've been living. I am ready for a change. I'm sick and tired of the addiction. I'm tired of the brokenness. I'm tired of the dysfunction in my family. I've been trying it on my own and it hasn't been working out. I am ready to make a shift. I am ready to get God involved in my life. You're going to have to push through some opposition when you make that move. Your flesh and the devil doesn't want you making any moves towards God. And it doesn't want you settling down into a relationship with God. It's a threat to your flesh. Enjoying what's been comfortable for so long. It's a threat to the enemy, to the devil. Because now you are choosing to serve God. And you become a threat. You become a threat to hell as an instrument that God can and will use to do his work here on earth. And every time you try to access more, every time you decide to dig a little deeper in God, every time you decide to start praying more, every time you decide to start reading the word of God more, every time you decide to start fasting and you decide that, you know what, I want more of God. And what gets me there? I need to pray more. I need to be in the house of God more. I need to be around the people of God more. I need to be reading the word of God more. I need to be pushing aside the plate. Why? Because I want access to more water. I want access to more of what I have experienced because what I've experienced so far is just a taste of what is available to me and it is available but you do have to dig for it there is more water but we're going to have to push through more flesh to access it more flesh that doesn't want to pray More flesh that doesn't want to get up early. More flesh that doesn't want to pick up the word of God instead of picking up something else. More flesh that would rather eat than to push aside the plate. But we realize that, hey, all I'm doing is I'm just digging a well deeper and deeper to access more of that life-giving water. My flesh has never helped me in living for God. My flesh is not my friend when it comes to wanting to live for God. Like my flesh is not my friend just trying to hold down a job. Your flesh doesn't even want to get up when the alarm clock goes off. It definitely doesn't want to wake up early and pray. This flesh that we walk around in is not excited. Half time it doesn't want to go to church, doesn't want to pray, doesn't want to read the Bible. We want to sit home and eat donuts and do whatever we want, whatever makes us comfortable and happy. That is our flesh. And every time I decide to, I want to get more serious in my walk with God. I want to dig a deeper well. You know what? I need more. I desire more of what God has available to me. 
I'm going to reach some opposition from my flesh and from the devil. You know, Isaac just continues to dig. A few weeks ago, Marcus had preached about Isaac, how Isaac was just there. Just always there, just constantly, you know, just there, consistent, just always there. And we see it here that the Philistines, what they were doing was they would come in and they would fill in a well that Isaac had unearthed and he would just go and he would move down the road and he would just dig another one and then another one. And this is what Isaac did. He was just consistently digging wells. When you look at verse 19, it says, and Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerir did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the well, or the name of the well, Esek, which means contention or opposition. So he digs this well, and what he faces is opposition, contention. Trying to just access clean living water that can sustain the growth and sustain the promise of what God wants to do in him and through his family. And so verse 21, it says, and they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna, which really means hostility. When you go into the Strong's Concordance, it says the origin of the word is from the same as Satan, that he receives more hostility and more opposition. And all he's trying to do, I'm just trying to live in the promise that God gave me. I'm just trying to stay on the right track. I'm trying to be consistent in my walk with God, trying to go deeper in God. And all he's getting is opposition and pushback from the enemy. And then verse 22, it says, and he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name Rehoboth, which means room. And he said, for now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And that, and the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for thy Ab- for Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants digged a well. We see that Isaac just continued to dig well after well after well until the Lord had given him room. Until the Lord had said, all right, you know what? You've tapped into it. You're right where I want you to be. And he continued. And then the Bible says he just digged another well. After God renewed the covenant to him again, what does Isaac do? He digged a well. Even when God said, hey, I've made room for you. You've got enough life-sustaining water to sustain you in the promise. And Isaac's response to that was, all right, I'm going to dig another well. Because there's always more water available to those who are thirsty. As many wells as you want to dig, there's wells to be dug. As much of the power and presence of God you want to tap into, you can tap into. There is no limit to what you can access in God. For some of us, we come to a well and we receive opposition. And we get driven off the well. And we go and we pout and we're mad and we complain and everything's not going right. I'm just trying to live for God. And everything is going wrong now. And I understand that. But Isaac's response to the same scenario was, all right, I'm just going to dig another one. And he dig another one. And then they came against him again. And he said, all right, I'm going to dig another one. And he just kept digging wells. Even when he accessed everything that supposedly he needed, he just continued to dig wells. He did not stop pouring himself into accessing life-giving water. You know, for us, you know, you're digging wells in your walk with God. Every time that you pray, 
every time that you read the word of God, every time you show up to the house of God when you feel like you'd rather be somewhere else or you're tired or you're weary or you, you pulled an all night shift at work and then you're at the house of God on the Sunday morning, you know, you're digging a well. You're trying to access more than what you have. You're saying, God, I'm hungry for more. Every time I come down to the altar and I, I'm saying, God, I'm, I'm wanting more. I, I desire more. Every time I wake up early to pray, I'm saying, God, I'm, I'm desiring more of what I've tasted and what I've experienced. Every time I read the word of God, I'm just saying, God, I'm wanting more of what's available to me. I'm closing here. If you can, let's stand to our feet. You know, I've been preaching the last few weeks in Deltona about how much is available to us. There's giftings, callings, there's breakthroughs and victories. There's anointing to be used of God. There's the grace of God. There, there are so many things that are available to us. And none of it really happens by accident. I mean, there's a lot that God will invite us to. You know, the Bible says that no man comes of the, the Father unless the Spirit draws him. You know, just the fact that we're here, there's been an invitation that's made to us. And on some degree, we've been answering that invitation. And you know what? There's also an invitation that, you know what? I've got so much available to you. That whatever you need, it's available to you. You need grace. You need strength to make it through. You need help to get through a problem you've been going through. The Bible says, let us therefore boldly un come into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy when in time of need. That Lord, whenever I need it, there's grace, there's strength, there's the desire to do what's right that is available to me. But none of it happens by accident. The more you dig, the more you uncover. And the more you dig, the greater abundance of water you tap into. And if you keep digging, you keep tapping into more and more water. And the more wells you have dug, the more water and resources that you have available to you. And what I found is that also people around you can to a degree tap into wells that you have dug. That for Isaac and his family, his, his family and his herdsmen and the people around him were beneficiaries of wells that he had dug. And I kind of find it's true for us as well. When we come to the house of God, like I said, we experience freedom and victory and stuff that we may not feel all the time. It's because somebody has been digging some wells in their personal time and in their personal walk with God. And we're benefiting from that. Also, my family is gonna benefit from wells that I have dug. Yes, they do have to get to a point where they dig their own wells. And my kids will grow up and, and have to dig their own wells with God. But right now, they're gonna be beneficiaries of wells that I have dug, that there will be a level of peace and victory in our home and in our life. Why? Because somebody has been digging a well that is benefiting others. You know, we want to affect our family and we want to affect people at work and we want to make a difference in our job and in our neighborhood. You know what? We better be digging some wells that has access to some water that other people can come and taste and say, you know what? That is what I've been looking for. That is what I've been needing in my life. Amen. You know, there was more available than just the wells his father Abraham had dug. There was wells of living water that he dug out himself. And you know, there needs to be regular attendance at the well. Time spent away from the well you have dug, or those that have come before you that have dug, opens the door for opposition to fill in the wells that you have been digging. This is why you may have come to God and you begin journeying with God and you, God filled you with the Holy Ghost and maybe God began working in your life and maybe you get sidetracked or detoured or, you know, 10 years later you come back and you find yourself, what? Digging wells all over again. Because opposition has filled in the well. Time spent away. You know, the wells that have been dug before us by Pastor Hires and Pastor Ramsey and pastors that have been here, Brother Williams, people that have been digging wells in this area for years. 
We can maintain those wells and keep those wells open. But there has to be a continued digging of wells on our part. Where we are digging our own wells and accessing water for ourselves. You know, and I feel like there's someone here that you've been feeling opposition. And all you're trying to do is just the right thing. You're just trying to live for God. You're trying to please God. You're trying to be a leader for your home. You're trying to do what's right. And all you're getting is opposition and pushback as what you're doing is you're, you're trying to dig wells. And the opposition's trying to fill it in as you're digging it. My advice to us tonight is, you know what? Keep digging. Dig another well. You know what? Opposition comes against me. You know what I'm going to do? My response, I'm going to dig a well. Something comes against me. I'm going to go home and dig a well. Something goes wrong in my life. I'm going to go find a place and dig a well. I'm going to pray another prayer. I'm going to fast another meal. I'm going to read another chapter in the Bible. I'm going to continue digging wells. In other words, it's a word to the opposition that, you know what, you can come against me and all that's going to happen, I'm going to go find another spot and dig another well for my family. Dig another well for my coworkers. Dig another well for my neighborhood. Dig another well for my family. Mom, keep digging. Keep digging for your family. Dad, keep digging those wells. Keep digging those wells for your home. Keep digging those wells that one day your neighbors will tap into and say, man, this has what I have been looking for. Some kind of life giving water. Young person, dig your own wells. You pull out that shovel and you start moving those rocks out of the way. And that flesh that tries to keep you from doing right, you know what? You just keep digging. You keep digging wells. And sooner or later, you tap into a well of life giving water. And God will make room for you. And God will make room for the growth that he wants to do in your life. But there has to be some digging to get there. The last thing, mom, the last thing, dad, the devil wants you doing is digging wells. Wells that are going to affect your household. And you're going to tap into power and resources. And there's going to be peace in your home because of it. And there's going to be victory in your life because of it. And it's going to change your family tree because you have tapped into wells. So the opposition you're feeling... Is really just meant to keep you from picking up that shovel and going to work. It's to keep you from picking up that word of God when you don't feel like it. It's to keep you from establishing a prayer room at your home. Because he knows if they tap into water, we're not going to be able to stop the growth. If Isaac digs into those wells, we're not going to be able to hold back Isaac and his herdsmen and the growth that God is wanting to do. So that what we're going to do is fill in the wells, make it as hard and difficult as possible. Because if Isaac ever taps into the water that he needs, then there's going to be no stopping Isaac. Isaac will grow and the Philistines will diminish. You will grow in your walk with God and the flesh will diminish. You will grow in your territory and dominion of where you walk and the enemy's stronghold and stranglehold will begin to diminish. Why? Because you have tapped in to some life-sustaining water. So we're going to take a minute and we're going to pray. If you want, we can gather around the front. You can pray where you are. But I'm really here to encourage someone. All that opposition coming against you. Let your response be to dig another well. Don't let the opposition coming against you. Dissuade you or push you off of the well that you've been digging. Because he just knows that, man, if you just keep digging, there's going to be no stopping you. If you keep tapping into what God has for you, there's going to be no stopping you. 
you keep digging and you keep accessing and hungering for more and more of God, there's going to be no stopping you. I want us to close our eyes and I want us to begin to pray. The presence of the Lord here is right now. And God's trying to encourage somebody that you have not been wasting your efforts. Those rocks that you've been pulling up out of the ground and you don't feel like you've tapped into water yet, those are not wasted efforts. Those prayers that you've been praying and you don't feel a breakthrough yet, it's not wasted effort. Because all you're doing is uncovering more earth. And you know what? There's some water down there. There's some water that you're working closer and closer to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. You're digging a well right now. You're pulling out rocks right now. Hallelujah.